Hey, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini, and uh, it, it is Wednesday again, and we've got a great interview with you with Ryan Froome. His uh, project is Frumador, and he's an amazing uh, singer, songwriter, uh, even uh, uh, there's some acting there because he's got an amazing uh, video to his song Solar Energy. It's uh, very powerful stuff, and I'm really excited to talk to Ryan here in a few minutes. I'd like to thank our sponsor before we get started, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine. That is pplmag.com. Uh, Pittsburgh's first internet, radio, TV network, online b- business magazine and community. You can listen to, watch, download, and receive emails from the latest audio and video created by the members of the community, including authors and different business people and doctors. There's a lot of great information there. You can learn a lot of stuff. You can find ways to save money, stuff about restaurants, recipes, and you can hear uh, great podcasts like this one, the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Um, if you're, <clears throat> if you like to keep up with what we are got going on, go to our Ludini, our website, LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com, uh, where you can uh, just type in your name and email, and you get a podcast shows right up in your mailbox every week, every Wednesday, a new interview, every Saturday, a new music podcast. Um, if you uh, love the kind of artists that we are promoting here on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, uh, please go to supportindierock.com where you can get involved in the promotion of amazing artists like Frumador and some of the other uh, people that I've, that I've had a chance to uh, been blessed to talk with, like Michael Mazaki and Deb Callahan and a lot of amazing artists out there. Uh, like I said, we've got Ryan Froome from Frumador on the line here, uh, combining an acoustic sound with electrical pulse of indie rock. Frumador's unique songwriting approach leaves room for the listener's own interpretation. His latest album, Can't This Wait, includes the single Solar Energy, for which there is a recently released climatic music video that has been filmed in the Arizona desert. Uh, it's a great video, and I highly recommend that uh, you can just go to the website, frumador.com, and uh, you can check that out. Ryan, welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hi, Lou. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Um, so um, tell us um, a little bit about how you got uh, started as a musician. Give us some background. Okay, yeah. Um, I began playing guitar at a very young age, um, around 10, when my father gifted me with a classical nylon string guitar. And I just sort of dove right in, started dabbling, and asked him some questions about basic chord structures and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I just sort of took off from there. And um, I I was very influenced just by watching him simultaneously play and sing at the same time and that was something that I I was really captivated by and I sort of wanted to strive for that um was your dad like was he in bands or 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 anything like that no you know he actually um he raised me in a church environment and I Mm -hmm. just seen him up on up on stage playing like special music and collaborating with the choirs um I remember, like, during Christmas time, he'd just do, like, little solos, and the church would ask him to perform. Oh, okay. Here and there. So that, so that was my early um, early um, exposure to just watching him and being sort of awed by that. Yeah. Now, you do have a formal music education. You went to Berkeley School of Music for jazz composition. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. Now tell us a little bit about your experience at Berkeley and how that uh, shaped your uh, shaped you as a musician. Sure. Well, first of all, Berkeley takes in a lot of students from all corners of the earth, and so I was fortunate enough to actually uh, roommate. I had a couple of roommates um, from different parts, and they all introduced me to sounds and um, rhythms and just styles that I had never been exposed to before. So just, just intermingling with the student body alone was education in itself for me. Um, and, you know, in terms, of the, in terms of the programs that they offered, yeah, I mean, I took um, jazz composition courses. I took uh, specialty courses in guitar. Um, and just, yeah, just like learning how to read and write music was, was um, 
was really helpful. It sort of opened up a few more, um, yeah, just opened up a few more channels to experience. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, broadens your horizons, you know, gets you thinking yeah. in different ways. Absolutely. Um, it, it can be really, uh, it, it can be really important. I mean, not everybody goes down that path, you know, who's, who becomes a great songwriter, but it gives you a sort of like different way of looking at it. Um, uh, but you've been writing songs since about the age of 12. You've been writing, I mean, that was one of the first things you started doing, right? When you started playing guitar was when you started writing songs. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, it, I think it was around then for sure. Like, I, I, I don't know what... I can't really target uh, or pinpoint the, the any specific inspiration mm -hmm. to really start doing that. I, I, I don't remember really feeling like I like I scheduled it in my daily plan or anything. I <laughs> like I needed to. I wasn't. I, I I didn't see it coming really. Thanks for but I I think it sort of came out of practicing and wanting to get technically better at the guitar. I think. That it sort of, it sort of came out of that, if that makes sense. Right. So tell so then let's that just sort of leads us right into then your songwriting process. Is it then based around the guitar? Are you sitting there playing the guitar and you go like, "Ooh, that's cool! I could turn that into something." Or how does it work for you? Certainly, yeah. I would say the guitar is the main instrument from which a lot of the um, melody ideas and stuff come um, come out of. I did I did used to play. Um, piano also I took some lessons early on and um I sort of regret not playing more piano um I gave up on lessons because I was I don't know just for for different reasons um but I think the piano is a beautiful instrument and it's really sort of in my opinion the instrument of all instruments you know like it, mm -hmm. it, gives, it gives you just tons of options to be a percussionist you can be a you know you can you can stack chords, and you can be, I don't know, you can just do so much with the piano. I sort of regret not, not embracing that more. But, you know, I, I, lo I love playing guitar, so that's where I love. <laughs> That's great. Okay, that's, that's cool. So tell us, um, now you have, you have a special uh, uh, place in your heart for the Beach Boys music. And, um, you know, I, I hear a lot of Brian Wilson sort of like, influence in your songwriting tell us about your sort of relationship with some of these artists that influenced you like the beach boys and the beatles yeah well um i, I really just ad admittingly i i latched on to to the sounds of beach boys and i didn't try to resist it i, I kind of took it in and you know just the harmonies and and the melodies the melodies just sort of have always stuck with me and never really got old um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I really started listening to the Beach Boys in uh, high school and, you know, coupled with the Beatles and yeah, just both of those bands. I mean, I've, I've, I've taken so many ideas from them. I've, I've probably ripped off a lot. A lot. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Everybody, you know, so, you know, every, everybody's got their, uh, you know, their, their go-tos, you know. And uh, if for you, I mean, I mean, but I mean, what you're doing is beyond. I don't want to give the audience the impression that you know you're just some sort of like imitator. I mean, what you have done is you fused a lot of kind of different things. Could you describe your sound? Um, that's that's a hard question. Yeah, it for, is. I know. For me to answer, um, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, I when I oh boy, this is. This will be a, this, this will be an interesting attempt. I think I think it's um I think it's come from um I guess you know I should probably say that I've also been influenced by some Brazilian artists. Um, yeah, I was gonna get to that. You spent some time in Argentina and Brazil, so I was gonna actually. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about that? That's but, definitely part of what what you have going on. Yeah, well, I was just. I'm, I'm sorry to, to kind of digress here, but I was just going to try to bring out the bossa nova samba influence and, mm -hmm. merge, and merge that with the Beach Boys in an attempt to try to describe my sound. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, it, when I when I tried to, to talk about my sound, I, I, I say that it would it, it comes from, like, a jazzy, like, samba 
rhythm with some melodies that are that are inspired by Beatles and Beach Boys. <clears throat> um, now you went to you lived in Argentina. You went to Argentina for a few months, and so is this where that sort of Latin influence comes comes in? Where you this is this where you became sort of aware of that? Certainly, yeah. Um, I lived in Argentina for just shy of a year, and <clears throat> I got into the folklore music there at the time, and. At the school that I attended, there was also a lot of students from Brazil, and uh, through through just hanging out with them and spending time with them, I was introduced to different genres um, of samba, being the bossa nova, and like other other rhythm, other rhythmic stuff um, that was you know kind of like local to there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I was I was definitely influenced. And I think I still am by by a lot of the Latin stuff. Of course. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's tell us about your your uh, the, the record that you you released here at the end of 2015. Uh, Can't this wait? Um, now tell us about the record. Like who's on it? Where did you record? Who produced it? And and is this this is your first like full length uh, album, right? Well, I recorded an album in 2007. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, since then, this this one that I just I released a couple like a, like about a week ago is is the first one since. Um, and I <clears throat> excuse me, I recorded here in in Orlando where where I'm based, and um, I collaborated with a producer. His name is Justin Beckler, and he is um, yeah he's he's just like a great local producer here in in the Orlando area. And it really just started out with just one trial song um, to kind of feel feel them out and to give it a shot. And that sort of snowballed and turned into an EP length. And then I was scratching my head. I'm like, oh, why not just go on, you know, go on full length? So I, I really didn't have a plan to, to do an album. It just sort of um, turned out that way. Oh. Huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, who played on it? Did you do all the instrumentation with your producer, or did you bring in other musicians, or how did that work? Yeah, I brought in other musicians. Uh, um, I brought in a drummer and a violin player, a couple horns here and there. <clears throat> so yeah, it was um, it was really it was really cool to to collaborate with others on it, and I'm very grateful to have you know um, that experience. All right. Well, you have the song, um, like kind of this. I guess that we would can, you would can call a single off of this called "Solar Energy." And uh, tell us a little bit about that song, and then tell us about the video. Do you have a really awesome uh, video for that? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, first off, the song <clears throat> the song has to do with sort of, um, I guess, the consequences that can come about from human behavior and like a lack of environmental awareness, I guess. Um, and so it, it, in a sense, it's sort of, it is sort of an, in my, it, it, there's a message behind it, mm-hmm. but you know, also I've, I've sort of just always been fascinated by the idea of renewable energy being available. Um, so I decided to just put these mixed feelings in a song. Yeah. Um, what about the? Tell us about the video. I mean, the video. For those of you who haven't seen it, uh, you definitely want to check out it. It's really, uh, like, totally uh, professionally done, very beautifully uh, uh, lit and shot. Um, so tell us a little bit about the. Because uh, there's kind of a like, the video isn't like a, uh, uh, like a blatant, you know, uh, let's have you know renewable energy, <laughs> you know, sort of like theme. There's like kind of like. It's kind of metaphoric. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so the first half of the video was shot here in a studio in in Orlando, and we blocked out the whole day. It was a long day. It was my first time doing anything <clears throat> of that nature. So, so my nerves were churning, but I was I was <laughs> thrilled, I was thrilled um, nonetheless. So, we filmed half of it here in like a dark dungeon studio to capture a little darkness and then 
um, myself uh, and the video director, <clears throat> we flew out to the border that um, the border that divides um, New Mexico and Arizona, mm -hmm. where my brother <clears throat> Alex lived um, on a Navajo Indian reservation. And um, he actually lived in in a greenhouse at the time. And that's where he put me up, and we just spent a couple of days shooting out there in, in Navajo Nation. Well, it's very beautiful, and I encourage everybody um, to to check uh, to check out the video. Um, it's uh, it is actually on um, the uh, your your website uh, frumador dot com. That's f r o o m a d o r dot com. Um, you know, before we get out of here, I just uh, I is it true? Are you a are you a surfer? I am when I can. Yeah, make it now tell us a little bit about surfing because that's kind of like be somewhat of an inspiration or something that helps drive your your music as well. Yeah, well, um, I growing up here in in Central Florida, um, you know, I was, oh, you know, I'm always kind of surrounded by water, um, so luckily I was just yeah I've I've had early exposure to the great outdoors and there's there's lakes and. And oceans all around. So, yeah, I just I paddled out my first time. I guess when I was a little grom, uh, around nine or ten, mm -hmm. and I was sort of hooked ever since. I mean, surfing to me is is uh, more than anything. It's more of just therapy. It's a form of therapy where I can sort of recharge my batteries and then come back to to react. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. Did you ever get any? Uh, did you ever get any uh, inspiration when you're out there on the waves for, for, for a song, or you know, does it ever like music ever run through your head or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Just sitting, waiting. There's a lot of waiting here in Florida because the waves aren't as consistent as as other places. So, so there's a lot <laughs> of sitting on your board, bobbing up and down, um, kind of just just waiting, but. But that's but that's all part of it, and I I certainly have heard you know melodies that have come to me and stuff just in between sets and stuff. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, so so um so Ryan, how, uh, how, where can people like kind of stay in touch with you and keep up with what you have going on? What's <laughs> the best way to do that? Yeah, well, I just recently la launched a, a website that you had mentioned, Frimador dot com, and um. I've just uh, started embracing a couple a couple different social media uh, platforms like um, Facebook. I I also try to post regularly regular videos. I try to be consistent on um, on YouTube, and I've got a Twitter and and an Instagram as well. So so any of those I I try to be um, consistent and uh, kind of updating what I'm doing. So. Well, what's coming up for you in the next uh, six to twelve months? What do you, what do you have going on? Well, I like to um, I like to just keep making music, really. And um, I've spent so much time in the studio lately, burying my head in in the midst of technology and and all. I I I miss being up up on stage, and and so I look forward to to performing a lot more and getting more opportunity to demonstrate my sound, you know, in like a live scenario. Are are you are you you have a uh, are you putting together a band or do you have a band that you're gonna you're gonna play live with or are you gonna just primarily do it acoustic? Yeah, I've scheduled a CD release show at the end of at the end of April, and um, I'm trying to bring other other band members on board. I've got a guitarist who's committed and pretty much a full band, but that's just for that. Show. Still, mm -hmm. I'm still in the process of, of trying to recruit people, you know, to, to commit on like a long-term basis. Um, that's been a little more difficult than, than I thought, but, but that's kind of the end goal. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Ryan, th thanks a lot for taking some time uh, today to, to talk with us. Um, folks, if you didn't catch that, that's frumador.com, F-R-O-O-M-A-D-O-R.com. And from there are all the links to Facebook 
and uh, Twitter and SoundCloud and everything where you can catch up on everything that Ryan has going on. Um, you guys have been listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. That is Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. Uh, if you would like to support what we have going on here, please check out supportindierock.com where you can get involved in a real way and make sure that this music gets its due. Uh, one more time to my sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine. That is pplmag.com. And thank you guys so much for listening. Ryan, we wish you all the best, man, on everything you got going on, okay? And uh, we're really thank excited you. to see what happens, and I hope you get out there on the road. All right. Thanks a lot, Lou. Take care. All right. Take, take care, man. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.